Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice algebra problem which is a times a times a minus a times a this is equal to 100. What is the value, what are the values of a given that a is not equal to 0? So let's prevent a solution from here. Now we have that a times a times a this is a to the power of 3 then subtract a times a this is a to the power of 2 this is equal to 100. See, the next step from here, let's take 100 on the left hand side so that we have a to the power of 3 minus a to the power of 2 subtract 100. This is equal to 0. So the next step again here, we have a to the power of 3 minus a to the power of 2 subtract 100, of which we can express 100 as 125 subtract 25 from here this is equal to 0 so we have a to the power of 3 minus a to the power of 2 subtract 125 we can express 125 as 5 to the power of 3 then we have minus times minus 25 here which is plus 5 to the power of 2 this is equal to 0 so we have 8 to the, to the power of 3 and 5 to the power of 3 so this is the same thing as 8 to the power of 3 minus 5 to the power of 3. Subtract 8 to the power of 2 plus 5 to the power of 2. This is equal to 0. The next step is that we have 8 to the power of 3 minus 5 to the power of 3. Subtract. Now, we can factor out 1 here. And this implies that in the parentheses, we have 8 squared minus 5 squared. This is equal to 0. Now, we have two parts here. The first part is this one, which is the difference of two cubes expressed as a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3. And the second part here is the difference of two perfect squares, which you can express as a squared minus b squared. So, from this part here, a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this can be expressed as a minus b, then a squared plus a b plus b squared so applying this identity then we have a to the power of 3 minus 5 to the power of 3 this can be expressed as a minus 5 then here we have a squared plus 5a then plus 5 squared which is 25 let's call this equation 1 and then we have the second part here is the difference of two perfect squares which is a squared minus b squared which can be expressed as a plus b then a minus b applying this identity then a squared minus 5 squared this can be expressed as a plus 5 then a minus 5 let's call this equation 2 so let's combine equation 1 and equation 2 from here so we have a minus 5, a squared plus a b plus 25, then we have minus a plus 5, that is a plus 5 from here, and then a minus 5, this is equal to 0. So this implies that a minus 5 is common here, so we can factor out a minus 5 into the parentheses, we have a squared plus a b no this is actually 5 a this is supposed to be 5 a from here so we have a squared plus 5 a plus 25 then we have that we have minus a plus 5 cross the parentheses here this is equal to 0 so we have two parts here we have a minus 5 this is equal to 0 and the second part here is a squared then we have plus 5a then plus 25 let's open the parentheses here minus times a this is minus a then minus times plus 5 this is minus 5 this is equal to 0 so this implies that here this is a squared then 5a minus a, this is plus 4a. Then 25 minus 5, this is plus 20. This is equal to 0. 
Now from the first part here, we have that a1 is equal to 5. And from the second part here, this is a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx then plus c, this is equal to 0. From this quadratic equation, we have that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and that c is equal to 20. So we can determine the nature of the root of this quadratic equation here by determining the discriminant value, which is actually b squared minus 4ac. Now let's substitute the values of a, b, and c from here. So that now here we have 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, then times c, which is 20. And therefore, we have 4 squared, this is 16, minus 20 times 4, which is 80. So we have 16 minus 80 from here, and this is equal to minus 64, and this is less than 0. And this implies that here we have 2 complex solutions from here we have two complex solution we have two complex roots these are supposed to be two complex roots of which we can solve by applying the quadratic formula here that is a2 comma a3 let's apply the quadratic formula this is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 is c everything here divided by 2 times a, which is the same thing as minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 is c. This is the same thing as the discriminant, so square root of the discriminant divided by 2 times a. So let's substitute the values of a, b, and c from here. So we have minus b, minus b here is b is 4, so this is minus 4 plus or minus the square root of discriminant. The discriminant value from here, this is minus 64 divided by 2 times 1. So this means that we have minus 4 plus or minus. We can express the square root of minus 64 as 64 times minus 1. Everything here divided by 2. So therefore from here, we have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 64, this is 8, then square root of minus 1, this is i. Then everything here divided by 2. In the numerator here, we find that 2 is common here. We can factor out 2 so that into the parentheses we have minus 2 plus or minus. Here we have 4i. Everything here divided by 2. So if we simplify here, we have that a2, comma a3, this is equal to minus 2 plus or minus 4i. So essentially, these are two complex solutions to this algebra problem. These are the two complex solutions to this algebra problem. We only have one real solution. We only have one real solution here which is a1, a1 is equal to 5. So let's verify that this a1 satisfies the equation. Let's verify here. So if you recall, if you recall, we have that a times a times a, subtract a times a, this is supposed to give us a value of 100. Substituting the value of a, which is 5, then we have 5 times 5 times 5, subtract 5 times 5 here. This is supposed to give us a value of 100. So 5 times 5 times 5, this is 125. Subtract 5 times 5, this is 25. This should give us a value of 100 from here. So 125 minus 25, this is 100. And this is equal to 100. And this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side. And this implies that A1 here satisfies the equation. And this solution or this algebra problem has got three solutions. From here, we have one real solution. This is a real solution here, one real solution. And 
two complex solutions from here. So can you follow the steps? Like this video. If you have alternative methods to solve this, kindly don't hesitate to showcase in the comment section. Like this video and subscribe. Thank you for watching.